Good morning. time and not the breakfast time and um so i want to just wait just a little longer for you guys to come on in i went out and got a waffle maker because i didn't have one let's see how's everybody doing we're gonna do waffles this morning i'm gonna wait just a little longer I got some time this morning, which I don't usually have time, but I have time. And I want to try to not try to like squeeze over on the side, but at least have you guys see what I'm doing. Hello, Amber. How are you from California? I'm Adelia from Texas. Where is everybody from? Hey, Betty Joe. Hi, Jody. Hi, Francis. Hi, Mia. Hi, Alicia. From Alabama. I'm from Texas. In the sunny, hot state. It's very hot here. All right. Hello, Aaron. How are you from Cleveland? All right. Mississippi in the house. Ohio in the house. I was in Ohio. Y'all have some weather out there in Ohio. Okay, New Jersey. Iowa. All right now. Texas here again. Where is everybody from? All right, we're going to get started on these waffles. I just wanted to get a few of you guys in here. I know it's late. I had planned to be on here about an hour ago, but I had to get my kiddos ready to go. All right, awesome. I'm glad everybody came in this morning. It's still breakfast time. It's not lunch time yet. All right. North Carolina. I know somebody in North Carolina. Hey, Betty Jo. And Susie. And Miss Sanchez. I'm trying not to jack up everybody's name. I'm not a good name pronouncer. Uh, Texas, yeah, Texas is hot. Georgia as well. So are you from Georgia, Susan? Georgia, Florida, Amber Pete. I had a hard time making the pancakes. I want to learn to make the waffles. <laughs> okay, Louisiana, that's my home state. Miss Thibodeau, how are you? I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana originally. Chicago in the house, Missouri, Vegas. All right now, I have a cousin that that is, uh, she's uh, over one of the casinos there in Vegas. Missouri, D.C., all right. All right, so we're going to get started on these waffles. You from Texas, Miss Stephanie? Where are you from in Texas? You know, Texas is a big state. I'm Austin, Texas area, real close, Massachusetts. Good morning to you, Connie. Wyoming, all right. Alabama, roll tide. <laughs> oh, you grew up in Corpus, but you moved to Ohio. You love Texas. Yeah, you need to come back to Texas. Because we know Texas is hot and it's good. The weather is good here in Texas. When the whole world is going crazy, Texas is like the calm of the storm, right? California, Kentucky. My brother lives in Kentucky. Fort Worth. All right. That's some Texas folk. All right. We're going to get started. So we're going to do, um, I guess, like a, a, a waffle sandwich. Uh, I know a lot of people ask me about what do you put on your, your pancakes. Here's the thing. There are things like agave, uh, there are also some things like honey, but you have to really look at what the sugar content is. Honey is all natural, making sure that if you do get honey, make sure it's pollinated in your, in your state or in your region. Because if you're in, you know, Oregon and then you get a Texas pollinated honey, that's not so good. So you want to make sure that it's pollinated where you are. Uh, some folks use peanut butter. Natural peanut butter is always good. I, even when I wasn't, you know, sleeved, I was sleeved about a year ago, 
I still didn't use syrup or honey or anything like that. I use cream cheese. So if I want to use cream cheese, I'm going to find something that's low in calorie and I'm going to use that cream cheese because that's what I used. I just never was a big syrup person. So find your syrup uh, that is low calorie and utilize that as well as any butter or anything. These things taste just like the regular pancakes. They are awesome. So we're just going to you know, convert that into a waffle. And I'm going to make a sandwich. I'm not going to, you know, use anything else. So if you want to do jellies or anything like that, just remember they still have to fall within your intake calorie, sugar, carb level. Okay. I uh, hope uh, some of you guys were on yesterday when we did the cold uh, turkey wrap. Uh, when we also did the, the heated, um, I think we had pork. And let me just say that I came home, I made some more, and that's really what the family ate. And I'm not going to go into that now. The video is still posted again. If you're looking for a video and it's not there, I probably transferred it over to our YouTube channel, which is Adelia's Operation uh, Reset My Life. If uh, you don't have it, I, if someone can post the link in the comments, or I'll do my best to probably post them right after this onto the, uh, the, the notes. Okay, so we're going to get started. You always want to make sure you have a good scale. Well, this is not a great scale, but I got this one from Walmart, and it serves, it serves the purpose. It, I don't think it was over 10 bucks. It's very inexpensive. It's a digital one, and it does, you know, uh, the, the ounces. It does the pounds, so it works just fine. Also, I went back to Walmart, and I got a waffle iron. I think it's on sale for like $14. I'm always going to look for the, the least one so that, I mean, because we spend so much money on our bodies, I want to ensure that we are not spending uh, uh, too much money because we have to make sure that we, you know, have our vitamins and we have the things that we need to ingest. So that is basically it. This is the waffle iron. It's, it's part of, oops, I'm going to break it already. And it's, a, it's plugged, so it's not hot while it's plugged, but there's, a, there's a, a mechanism here at the top where you turn it. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, uh, not maximum, but right in between. When it's ready and heated up, the light will turn green. Uh, and those are pretty big waffles. So let's get started. I don't really have any measurements for you. Uh, but this is my protein powder that I'm using. You guys saw it before. It's the Premier Protein. I found this at my local uh, HEB is one of our local grocery stores here. So if you have a Kroger's, if you have uh, Walmart's always a good place. I'm not saying that it's there, but it's a possibility. Now I get my protein, my uh, Premier Protein drinks. I get those from Sam's. So I do believe Sam's also has this. I, I do the drinks. I do the, the uh, protein bars. And so all of Premier stuff I found at Sam's. Uh, you should be able to get it online at Sam's or online at Walmart. But this is the powder that I'm using. I did have people uh, reach out to me say that they used a different powder and it didn't come out right. All I know is this is what I was Holy Spirit led to get and this is what's working. So if you want to do chocolate, if you want to do a different flavor, if you want to put, uh, I think someone even told me what about using the, uh, the peanut butter powder. Fine. Put that peanut butter powder in here change the flavor because again this is vanilla so it's a it's a base level flavor and you can add whatever flavoring you want in there to change the flavor that you want it so that's what i like about this one i'm also going to make some hamburgers and i'm going to instead of putting sugar in this i'm going to put daddy seasoning in it and we're going to have us uh, some hamburgers with the protein bread okay so Inside it comes with a scoop, so I just really just fill up the scoop and kind of level it off. I just fill up the scoop. I put it in there. I do not, as I said again, have any specifics. Use three-fourths cup of water, da 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 I tried that and I messed everything up. It was like a mess. So again, you want the consistency to be like a, a, a pasty, uh, like your regular um, pancake. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water in there. And then if I make too if I if I make it too watery, then I'll just add more. So right now, this is a little too a little too watery for me. And it will thicken up. So I'm gonna do something like um, cinnamon and nutmeg. 
I like cinnamon, so I'm gonna put that in there. So it is thickening up for me. Again, so this is new. It's not like I've been doing this forever. And I got nutmeg, or you can use pumpkin spice, or you can use apple spice, or uh, whichever. I'm gonna also add in some vanilla. You can add in almond flavoring if you choose to. It's totally up to you what you wanna use in there. And you want it to take on the flavor that you want. So I also know that it wasn't as sweet as the kids would like it. I'm not a big sweet person. So you judge it. I'm gonna use an artificial sweetener. This is just one equal. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in there. Then I'm just gonna stir it. It's actually doing really well. So this, this is the consistency. See how it's sticky like? It's almost like you can get in there and make paper mache. All right, I'm gonna turn this just a little bit because I'm not sure if you can see I have all you guys comments in there. And I did not spray the iron any different than what it was. I'm gonna change so I can get everything out of here. I have a spatula. I'm gonna take this spatula and I'm just gonna put it right in the center. I'm just gonna spread it around. I like the fact that it's easy and you, it's only one ingredient, either water or protein shake, whatever you wanna put in there. Totally up to you. Once I get it kinda of spread out, I'm just gonna close it. How long? I usually kinda of check it, usually after about a minute or so, I kinda of check it. All right, so. Let's start with the eggs since we're gonna uh, make that. Now I also, for those of us that like beef, this is a H-E-B brand, but I'm quite sure there's a Walmart brand, there's a Kogos brand, brand, and this is extra lean. I don't nor normally do steak in the morning, but there are those of us that do. Again, we can't eat that much anyway, so you're not really gonna get that much. There's also Jimmy Dean's turkey sausage which i like to use as well and then i had some uh, pork that i had cooked and i just took what's left over i like to make it pretty simple i made the kids tacos again and then i utilize that either in their eggs or in their tacos and if i wanted it which i probably won't do it but i just wanted to show you guys so i turn on the um scale I put this on there and it has a has a, an amount and I just zero it out. So now it's zeroed out and then I'll take my turkey sausage and I'll measure it out to about an ounce. All right, so that's about an ounce of turkey sausage and I'll do the same with the beef. I'll do the same with the whatever it is that I'm gonna use. All right, so now I have some cheese. It's amazing how this is a house of cheese, but when it comes time for me to use the cheese, it's all gone. Go figure. So this is already uh, regulated for this, so when I put it on there, it didn't give me any weight. So I'm gonna take the cheese and try to get at least an ounce. That's a half an ounce right there. I think I'll probably have just about an ounce of cheese. Yeah, there you go. Just about an ounce of cheese. My family likes cheese, obviously, because everything I do has cheese in it. All right, so we're going to start the pot. I know you guys know how to make eggs, but I'm just kind of showing you the whole thing. See, it's already going. It's not ready yet. I'm not sure how long that was, but I just kind of keep checking on it. I'm not going to do the, uh, the steak. And you can do one of two things with your egg. You can choose to spray your pan, depending on where you are and how much fat you want to intake. Or you can take and use, a, I always use, if I decide I want butter, I always use like a small pat of butter because you don't need that much. It's just about making enough oil in the pan so your egg doesn't stick. Uh, so it's totally up to you. You can do one or you can do both. I usually like to just like, when I go to restaurants, 
just crack my egg in the pot and the pot's not ready yet but i crack my egg in the pot and as the egg is cooking i, I move it around i want to know i got some real eggs in there i got this uh apron it was given to me from uh kids that made it in uganda and i'm like okay y'all must think about skinny people because i mean it has like little to no cord back there and i'm like i'm gonna try to wear this thing but i am not that small okay so as the egg is cooking my waffle is still cooking it's not as beautiful as it was yesterday when i did it but nonetheless another thing you can do when your egg is cooking is just put a top on it and it will cook on its own and then as it begins to cook all i'm going to do is just throw some cheese on top of it or some sausage on top of it and you can also have some bacon this waffle line is amazing the family likes it especially when look my <laughs> my daughter-in-law is already down here going i smell waffles <laughs> she's like i can take these and just eat them by themselves there you go it's not a beautiful waffle but it is a perfect waffle and for those of us we cut it and we make a sandwich so with that said my egg is still cooking i like uh eggs over easy that's that's my favorite egg and I'm just going to turn that egg over. Where are you guys from? How long have you had your surgeries? Because I had mine about, about 15, 16 months ago this month. And so um, I am 16 months out. How far out is everybody? Hi, Amy. Thank you. Hello, friend. Sandy, oh, that's my girl Sandy and Bridget. Five years ago, that's pretty amazing. Angie, Bridget, Jennifer. All right, our egg is still going. Don't be afraid to, uh, to try different things. I am not afraid of burning stuff up because that's how we learn. We burn it up and we make it right. Six months, Mandy. Eight days, Amy. Two years, Aqua two months daniel so how is it going for you guys all right i have very little space in here all right so with that i'm going to take i didn't add my my sausage but i did make some bacon So I'm going to take that, I'm going to place it, and see this is a huge waffle, and it's a waffle that you can eat on all day long, and the great part about it is, is it's well within your protein intake, and there's no extra added things that cause calories. So you can choose to have it one of two ways, you can choose to go ahead and have it like this, or you could take that, for most of us, we can't eat all of that. A good pair of scissors is always great. So really, I have two waffles. I take, this is one piece of bacon that I broke in two. Take my bacon. And there I have my sandwich. And it tastes good. It's good. You can add your your honey on there you can add your agave on there if you're a peanut butter fan you can add your peanut butter on there there's natural peanut butter that you can add to this and all protein protein waffle the egg is protein the bacon is protein or whatever sausage or steak that you may want to put on there and the great part about this is is you can take it to work and you can eat on it eat half for breakfast and the other half for lunch and if your kids are with you they can eat it too it's all protein it's something that you can have and it's like bread i mean we love bread we didn't get here because we didn't like bread so with that you're having your bread you could also take this same thing and season it i mean i have daddy seasoning this is my makeshift container i have my father's seasoning that he created and you could use that same thing 
mix it up, make you a pancake or make you a waffle and put your hamburger on top of that. Taking like uh, hamburger balls and putting them in the waffle iron, cooking them and bringing them out. And there you have a waffle uh, uh, hamburger and then you have your waffle bread and it's just like eating a hamburger, putting your cheese on there, your tomatoes on there, your onions on there. So this is the same thing we did with the um, with the pancake recipe. You can try it out, see how sweet you want it, see how what the different flavors are, and there you go. I think some guy says, I'm gonna make me a McMuffin. There you go. You got you. There goes somebody else coming in the kitchen. You have whatever it, you have, a sausage and egg <laughs> and bacon somebody's asking for it uh and um no you can keep it <laughs> so my family there's my son I'm, I'm gonna pop off of here in just a second uh so this is my daughter that's okay and then my son back there he's waiting for his and i know you guys know Say hi, Damien. <laughs> so um, that's what I do every day. And also, if you are doing your collagen and it's something that maybe you can't stomach inside your drink, put it inside your waffle. Put it inside your pancake. Uh, put it inside your coffee. For those of you who are, you know, I'm speaking to more and more people who are uh, depressed and are, you know, uh, getting to a point where they don't want to do anything. My advice is and always will be get out of the house. A lot of us don't have regular work jobs. I don't. So I find myself that when I am in the house, you guys can go ahead and take over. I'm going to go turn this off for me. Uh, I have to get out of the house every day. My son's sitting at the counter. He just had breakfast, but he's still sitting at the counter. I um, make sure that I get out of the house every day. And in getting out of the house every day, that means that I, I'm more clear in my thoughts. And I have uh, more reason to want to do things. A lot of us get in a state of depression because we find ourselves staying in the house and the spirit of depression begins to loom over us. Uh, the spirit of suicide begins to loom over us. And that was one of the biggest things that was uh, pressing upon my heart this morning. And I know there are a lot of people that are dealing with those spirits because they're in the house and they don't come out. They don't do anything. They don't want to eat. They're not getting their protein in. They're not getting their water in. And they're depressed. Or if they go out during the week because they have a job and they have no choice but to get out, then what ends up happening is, you know, on the weekend, they come home and they begin to fall fall as as far as their spirit begins to fall and they begin to not want to go outside and not want to do anything we had this surgery for a reason we had it so that we can be encouraged to start living life and stop and stop existing in life a lot of us have uh physical ailments which cause us to have to get the surgery but we got the way we got because of whatever we were dealing with emotionally and i know we're talking about waffles and, and things of that nature but i know that there's also you know beyond the food there is a mental um health that has to be dealt with uh and i know they sent us through psych evaluations and they do all those things but the aftermath of it all in the process where we're not losing weight in the process where we are not losing weight fast enough or we feel we're not on a good road or we look at um the facebook groups and we see that somebody that had surgery when i had surgery has lost 127 pounds and i've only lost you know 61 pounds or 58 pounds or or 36 pounds or i'm at a standstill but i want to speak to those of you who are in that that position i want to speak to those of you that find yourself you know lingering in in a place of defeat when we linger in a place of defeat it gives us um a place where we end up getting in deep dark places where we don't take care of our emotional health our mental health or even our physical health and we end up not getting in what we need to get in and i mean how many of us know that when we go to family events 
if we're happy and we're joyous and we can eat all the barbecue chicken and ribs and sausage and we can be so full and somebody comes over with a plate of something and say, taste this. If we're in a good mood, we're going to eat it. We're going to taste it. We might just eat the whole thing. But if you're in that place and you don't even want to eat just the, what it takes to help your body to survive and to be uh, strengthened, then we have to look at what is that behind that that's causing that. One of the things is, is a lot of you guys are not getting out of the house. You've got to get out of the house. I'm not trying to give Starbucks any business. So I'm just going to say, hey, there's a coffee shop near you. If you are a coffee drinker and I know you're drinking your protein da daily, I'm looking around for my protein because I think I've already drank it. Get out. Go. It's $2.87. Go to Starbucks or any place. Get you a couple of shots. If you like strong coffee like me, get you three shots of decaf espresso. If you like it a little less, do one shot or two shots. Get it in a tall cup. Have them to put a couple of equals in there and then pour your protein over in that. Make sure they put ice in there and drink that. One, you're out of the house and that's what we want. And two, if you're out of the house, you're more likely to want to do something else. And you're feeding your body the nutrition that it needs. And so your body then will begin to perform for you in a way that it's not performing for you now. If you're not getting in that protein, if you're not getting in that water, your body is not going to perform. You need that protein. You need that water. That is going to keep that weight coming off of you because if you are not, then what happens is your body is holding on to everything that you put in it and you end up either gaining weight or your weight never moves. You'll fluctuate in between that one or two pounds. And remember, guys, the closer you are to your goal weight, the lot, sl the lot slower your weight will come off. If you're in the beginning, and the, in the beginning, it's hard to get those calories in. You got to get those calories in. You got to get that protein and You got to keep going with the water, with the soups. If you're in your puree stage, put it in a pot, get you a submerging blender. And it's, it's, it's a long blender that when you put everything on the pot and you start boiling it and everything's boiled, you put it in there and you can, and you can, uh, uh, puree everything. So after you, um, uh, puree it, then if you could drink it, you can have it. So you can put your chicken in there. You can put your ground beef in there. You can put all those things in there. And when you boil it enough, it will parade for you. I want you guys to encourage yourself because sometimes there are so many people that speak negative in your life. You have to encourage yourself. You have to get out of the house. Most importantly, you live in a neighborhood. I don't care where you are. Get out of the house. Start walking the streets. Uh, if some of you that don't have jobs and you're at home, get out, start walking. Some of you that work on your lunch break, take a walk, get some fresh air and we need vitamin D anyway. That's why we're taking vitamin D tablets. Cause we don't, we're not, we don't absorb as much. And most of the time we don't get out the house anyway, which is one of the major reasons why we have to have that. So get out of that house. And you got to get out of your own thoughts. Start going and doing things. That's why I'm saying, where are you from? So that somebody in your city, somebody in your state can connect with you. And y'all can empower one another for change. Y'all can empower one another to be uh, encouraged to go a step further. There was one young lady on here and I applaud her because every day she got out. And she was like, I wasn't able to walk this far. And look what I'm doing today. I wasn't able to walk this far look what I'm doing and it's a week later get out of the house and continue to keep your mind focused on being outside because in Satan lives in dark places and suicide lives in dark places and fear lives in, in dark places and all the things that keep you bottled up and cringed up lives in dark places what happens when you're not in a good mood you just won't be left alone you won't put the covers over your head you don't want the tv on or you're on tv and then what do we do we end up eating chips we end up eating things that that aren't good for us or in most cases we don't end up eating anything at all you got to get out of that house First and foremost, your first step of the day, when you get up in the morning, if you don't feel like eating, then get grab you a protein drink. Put your tennis shoes on or your flip-flops or go barefooted if you have to. Get out of that house. 
walk around your yard, walk to the mailbox, walk to the neighbors, walk down the street, get out of the house. And I promise you how you feel and what you feel will begin to change. And each day when you do this, you'll go further and further and further and you'll feel less and less and less with depression, with fear, with worry. Those of you that are getting prepared for surgery, I want you to stay off of the groups if it gives you fear. Because as many people that have had challenges, as many people that have died, there are more of us that are here living and ex- and, and, and experiencing life to the fullest. Those are the, I mean, there's like hundreds of us and then there's like two or three that may have had a bad experience. Not everybody's going to have that experience. Not everybody is going to have a bad experience. We all have different experiences. But with all the people that I've spoken with, even though they've had bad experience, they still are happy that they are on this side of surgery because they're getting their life back. I cannot tell you how getting my life back has made a difference. It has caused me to be able to get out to enjoy Adelia. I enjoy Adelia. I get that. I didn't enjoy Adelia. I didn't want to go anywhere with her. I couldn't even sit down at, at the, go have dinner with her. I couldn't do any of those things. But guess what? I enjoy having dinner, lunch, breakfast, just with her. And I can go into places and just do nothing. I don't even have to read a book. I can go and have dinner and look around. I can go and have, I mean, I I used to go out to have dinner and always had a book with me because I had to look like I was doing something because I was too embarrassed to be by myself. No one cared that I was there by myself, but I cared that I thought that someone else thought that and that I was embarrassed. And then, of course, some of us don't want to go out to eat because we're too big. And then people are probably talking about us and we're just ashamed, period. I, for one, don't like styrofoam unless it's to take to go what I haven't eaten. I don't go to a restaurant and purchase something to go. I'm going in that restaurant. I'm going to have an experience. And the experience that I haven't had and I haven't wanted to have, I am going to have. I'm going to be in that restaurant. I'm going, and if I have to, y'all know I'm not ashamed. I'm going to pull out my little snack bag. I'm going to get my little Kool-Aid packs. And I'm going to put that in my water. I'm going to ask them for some lemon. I'm going to pull out my coffee. Whatever it takes. And I'm going to do me. And I'm going to be happy with doing me. And it shows. So I want you guys to get out of that house. I want you guys to ensure. I want you guys to ensure that you are not in that house all day, every day. So that you can begin to live life and be excited about being you. It's an experience like no other to be able to be comfortable in your own skin. And as you begin to lose that weight, you're going to feel more and more like a new person. Have the surgery. You're not too old. Not too much time has passed by. And you won't die on the table. If they thought that you were going to die on the table, you wouldn't. they wouldn't have cleared you for surgery. Your biggest fear is that you don't think that you're going to wake up. And if they had that fear, they would not put you to sleep. I myself did not have that fear because it was do or die for me. <clears throat> I was slowly dying every day. So was it a thought? No. My only thought was, is it going to work? That was my thought. Am I going to succeed at this or am I going to fail yet again at something else that I've set off gung-ho to do? And I can tell you that my success is not somebody else's success. Like I said, people have had their surgery before me and after me and have lost way more weight than I have. But guess what? This is my success. And I... I'm happy with my success. I'm uh, 80, 87 pounds down now, and I'm excited. I mean, I went from 85, now you guys hear me say 87, so it's slowly growing and getting bigger. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the fact that it's going to take me another year to lose the other 20 pounds. I'm okay, but in the meantime, I'm enjoying life. In the meantime, I am not just existing. In the meantime, suicide is not pressing on me. Fear is not pressing on me. Depression is not pressing on me. Even though I I grew through, and I say grow through and not go through, because if I'm growing, I'm getting better every day. I want to grow. I don't want to just go through it. I want to grow through it. So as I grow through my that experience, I learned that I can say that there were days that I just I just I didn't want to do anything. 
because I had to put on a face and be, you know, encouraging for my family. But I could tell you that I did. There was one day that I did come home and I just came home and got in the bed and just covered my head because I'm 51 years old and I am wondering. I mean, he was younger than me, but I'm like, you know, that could happen to me. That could be me anytime. And then the fear of death and dying started to loom over me and have me depressed and not eating. And then, it, then all of a sudden, I'm just like, what are you doing? You are allowing the things that you uh, continue to defeat every single day get you in a space where I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to answer the phone. I didn't want to cook. And you know, my son then came here about three, four times. And he like, I saw them waffles you cook. He's nonverbal. But I saw them waffles you cook. And I want some. You need to get off this live so I get some. But even in that, he would come over to my bed. And he would, you know, rub me on my face and put his face on mine. And he grabbed me by my hand and he would pull me. And I could tell you, I didn't want to feed him, nor did I want to feed myself. But I had no other, he wasn't going to let it happen, this, no, that. So he didn't speak verbally, but he spoke emotionally. And when he pulled me out of bed, he gave me a hug. It was early in the morning, about 6 o'clock, uh, 6 a.m. But he gave me a hug and he led me to the kitchen. He led me out of the defeat that I was laying in. And I knew at that point, then he went and he grabbed my hand and he brought me into the bathroom and he kept touching the top of his head, meaning I need you to comb my hair. Then he grabbed his toothbrush and he handed it to me with the toothpaste. So basically he was like, no mama, you can't sit here. I need you to comb my hair. I need you to brush my teeth. And then he got my keys in my purse and he got my snack bag. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it's like, it's time to go. We He felt it because uh, he, he was like, we're not staying up in this house and we're going to get out. And so he gave me the keys and he went, you know, and he always stands like this when he's ready. And he stood at the door. He's ready to go. He didn't ask for his toys. He didn't ask for anything. He was at the door and he was ready to go. So he pulled me out of that, you know, that small window, although it was like a few hours, he was just like, no, sister, you're not going to stay in here like this. We got to go somewhere. So we got up. We went to the store. We went to the park. We did some different things. And I think he laughed more that day than ever. So his laughter turned my, turned my sorrow into laughter. And the day of that spirit of depression was broken. And he, like I said, he doesn't even speak. But it was just what he exuded with the laughter and the pushing me. Sometimes we have to push ourselves out of that challenging situation. And I'm telling you today, get out of the house. Go forth. Get you some coffee. Go down the street and, and go to the grocery store. Find you that protein powder. Uh, find you. Look around and see some different things. The wraps that I showed you guys yesterday. Get out of the house. If you got to do it in the house, do it later. If you could do it outside of the house, then do it outside of the house. Don't stay in that house. Do some yard work. Clean out your garage. But get out of the house. Put some clothes on. Put some shoes on. Get out of the house. And if you get out that house, I will promise you, you'll want more and more. It'll become an addiction. Go to the park. See your town. You can do things that don't cost money. We do things that don't cost money every day. Do yourself a favor, get out of that house because the depression is waiting there. The depression is sitting there and it's going to continue to loom over you until you get it out. And when you leave out the sunlight, the fresh air, the people go window shopping. I like the window shop, do something, but I want you to promise me every single day that you'll get out of the house. Even if it's walking down your own street circling it and coming back. And I promise you after the first time, you'll want to do it a second time. Do it at least two times. So walk around the street once, then walk around it again. Continue to tell yourself that you're beautiful. Continue to tell yourself that everything is working out. You will not fail. You cannot fail. And just because I failed yesterday, I'm not going to continue failing. I'm getting back on the horse. If you need someone to encourage me, 
encourage you let me know reach out to me there are plenty of people in this feed let them know where you're at let them know what state what city what neighborhood that you're from so that they could be able to connect with you let people know that they can use you to lean on let people know i need a a, a pusher because i'm pusher number one for you but you need pushers and there are plenty of pushers in there miss gina is in here miss d is in here they are your pushers and they're going to help to pull you out of the hell that you find yourself in don't sit up and linger in hell in depression in fear and in suicide and i come against every spirit of suicide in the name of jesus i plead the blood of jesus over you and i command it to go in jesus name and if you receive that god will cause that spirit to leave and not return it's only there because you're allowing it there it's only there because you have not spoken the word to send it and cause it to go in the name of jesus i speak to every spirit of depression in the name of jesus you will not overtake these people and i command you out of their lives out of their house out of their situation off their children off their life in the name of jesus if you believe that and you receive that it is gone in the name of jesus come out of that house and don't allow it open up those curtains and windows and blinds and declare the devil out of your house out of your situation and know that you have power in your tongue and when you begin to speak and when you begin to believe and when you begin to raise your hands and decree and declare the word of the lord he says that he will be with you in times of trouble and the enemy cannot hurt you he cannot defeat you because he's where under your feet so begin to declare and decree the word of the lord knowing that he cannot defeat you he won't defeat you because i'm praying for you I know there are people in this group that are praying for you and we will continue to keep you lifted up. We will continue to help you defeat the enemy in the name of Jesus. Remember, the word of God is a two edged sword. It slays the enemy and it heals you. And if you will continue to declare the word of God over your life and over your situation, watch the enemy flee. When you get up in the middle of the night, because there's a lot of you that get up, you're in a cold sweat about the surgery, and then you're in a cold sweat about failing, and then you just don't know why you up. Get the word of God out. Read Psalms 103. Read Psalms 91, and know and decree the word of the Lord, and know that you psalms 1 you are like a tree planted by the rivers of running water that shall bring forth this fruit in its season and your lease will not wither you will continue because you're in the word of the lord and it is good ground and it is water to your soul so just remember coming out of that house and begin to to, to declare god's word over your life knowing that Depression can't defeat you. Worry can't defeat you. Lack then not feeling important, not feeling like people care and love that. The devil is a lie because if they don't care about you, I sure enough care about you. And if you need someone to encourage you, there are plenty of people in this feed. Let them know that they can utilize you. Let them know that they can reach out to you by messenger. My messenger is always filled up and flooded. Know that I try to get to everybody as quickly as I possibly can, knowing that if you saw that I saw saw your message but i haven't responded one or two things have happened either my phone went off and i lost you in in the group of people or i got pulled away for a moment please send me another message back and to to remind me that i haven't responded and be an answer for somebody be a place of encouragement for someone you are an encourager you will have victory in this thing you will not be defeated no matter how far out you are if you gain five pounds, 10 pounds, or are you right back where you started before surgery? You can have victory. On Adelia's operation, reset my life. We, we, we reset often on a constant basis. We encourage people on a constant basis. I transfer all the videos over to YouTube, which is again, Adelia's operation reset my life. We are here to empower you. We're, we're talk in talks about bringing conferences into different cities and states and i want to come to a city near you i went to miss d in new orleans i am looking to go to nicole and new york hopefully not too far in this year because it gets cold i'm going over into australia uh i believe right around october well they are planning the conference and i plan to be there so if you're in australia i want to see you uh reach out to me there's someone that needs what you have there's someone, and I want to come to where Miss Gina is, and she's in Florida. 
somebody needs you. Somebody needs to know that they are not alone in this thing. They need to know that someone understands. You know I understand. I've been where you've been. Or sometimes I even grow through where you are. So it's always an empowerment connection when like my son when he came in he he didn't speak he did he just and i knew he knew where i was and he pulled me out of it he didn't talk he didn't say any words but he knew where i was and when he was directing me i knew where he was trying to take me and sometimes we need that sometimes we don't know where we why we are where we are but we need somebody to know i know and i see you I want you to come out from behind those closed doors. I want you to, even though you don't feel like it, I want you to take the step. I want you to get in the shower. I want you to put the clothes on, the shoes on. I want you to gather the kids. And even if their hair ain't comb and your hair ain't comb, get out of the house. If you don't have children, if you're not married, put some clothes on. Get out of that house. I don't care what you look like because the spirit of depression will linger and it will have you there for days. If you don't have a job, it'll have you there for weeks. Get out of that house. Stop allowing that spirit of depression to sit in your house, to sit in your presence. Command it out. And I guarantee you, every day you'll get stronger. Every day you'll grow to a new level of encouragement and empowerment and you'll be on here like me, talking to people and encouraging them and pulling them out of the hell that they find themselves in every day. Know that I love you with the love of God and I know that all you, there's a young lady that I spoke to this morning that I believe she's going to surgery on Friday and I will be praying for you on Friday. I want to pray for those individuals that are that are getting ready to have surgery that are that are on the on the fence about surgery that are uh, even growing through challenges with probably regaining some weight or you're so far out you don't know if you are going to uh, be able to get back in track. The greatest thing about our, our 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 tool is it'll snap back in place if you'll go back and reset it. Go back to your pre-op diet for. I say no less than two weeks. Some people say a week, two weeks, a month. Get it back in shape, and I guarantee you it's going to work for you. Remember, your body is a fine-tuned machine. If you put in it what it needs to put in it, it will perform for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for your precious people. And I thank you that those that are going for surgery, Lord God, that you will give them peace in their mind, peace in their spirit, peace in their bodies. And I thank you, Lord God, that as they are on the table, that you will guide and lead the hands of the doctor, the hands of the team, because they're your team that you have put for such a time as this and since they are your people lord god that you will oversee every single detail of that surgery and anything that may be wrong that they will that it will be seen and it will be corrected so father i just thank you for peace 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 in the name of jesus i thank you that you will cause people to be on that path that will use their power their ability and their influence to bless them to empower them to encourage them lord god and i thank you that they reach out and they touch someone today and they become an encourager to someone near and far in the name of jesus father i just glorify and honor your name and i come against every spirit of depression i come against every spirit of fear i come against every spirit of suicide i come against every spirit that is not like like you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person's mind and that the enemy cannot bombard them and the enemy cannot penetrate that bloodline in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for joy, unspeakable joy. And I thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding for every situation that they're growing through, for every death that they're growing through, for every abandonment issue that they're growing through, for every challenge financially, mentally, and emotionally that they're growing through. I thank you, Lord God, that your peace will mount guard over their minds and heart and that they will trust in you and that they will know that even though they can't see you, track you, or trace you, that you are working behind the scenes on their behalf and that they have whatever they need within them to grow through each and everything that they're faced today. Father, we just give you honor and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. 
Talk to you soon. Become my friend. Go over to Adelia's Operation Reset My Life group as well as the YouTube page. Like and subscribe. I'll be doing some new things on there that I won't do on Facebook. And every video that you haven't been able to find, it's been transferred over to the uh, YouTube channel. Know that I love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. We love you.